Let's see if we pass our luck check. It's the No Class Podcast. With your host, Eddie. And Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Eddie. How are you, bud? Pretty good. How about you? Fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you for asking. Well, at the top of the show, I like to talk about one thing, and I know you do too. So, have you ever noticed there's a lot more breads now than when you were a little kid? There are a lot more breads. I've noticed that. What happened? It used to be white and wheat, and that was about it. Um, you know, it's it, the inherent problem with the system. You know, you can't just have that white bread and that wheat bread. It's inappropriate. All right. Well, now, here's when we started the podcast over again. We have Three, diversity. Two, <laughs> <laughs> Focaccia. Is that, is that bread? I can't. Ciabatta. Ciabatta. Uh, sourdough. On a sourdough bun. Yeah. That's like all the weird cheeses. I love cheese. Mm. Cheese. Glorious cheese. I've only ever met one person in my lifetime who's like, oh, I don't like cheese. I've met a couple. and They're weird people. Strange. Strange. Anyway, I, I, like, of all the things, like if like, you had to cut a food out, I could, I could give up anything but cheese. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I had to get, I, which is sad. Our patients really aren't supposed to eat a lot of cheese because it's got uh, phosphorus. And so, and, you know. But that's not the one they really complain about. You'd be surprised how much potassium is in potatoes. People always talk about bananas. No, man, like potatoes. That's why how the the Irish lived off of them for how long? Because there's zinc and magnesium and potassium and all kind of really good vitamins and minerals in potatoes. I'm glad I could edify you in this regard. Yeah, but yeah. you wouldn't choose meats. You'd give up the meats for cheese? Well, no, I'm talking about, like, if I had to give up any one thing, like, could you give up shrimp? Yeah. Could you give up steak? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like to, but if it's like, could you give up cheese? I'd be like, So if you no. just had to give up everything and live on an all-cheese diet, you're I in. would die <laughs> the next day because I'd be so bound up or something, you know. Well, pretty much if it's say, not potatoes, we've determined you'd be dead. Sybil, don't, don't let that boy eat all them all that cheese. He's going to get bound up. That was my granny. And she was like, he's seven. He's a little boy. He's not going to get bound up by anything. We need him to get bound up, you know. For those of y'all don't understand what bound up means, it's yeah. country for constipated. Yeah. Because old people are so worried about their bowel. So if you haven't, if you've been wondering why it took us so long to get around to doing another cast, we've been bound up <laughs> trying to come up with material like this <laughs> that will satisfy you. This is a classy, this the is a modern classy listener, yeah. the demanding listener. It, it, we're just a classy bunch. You're going to cut this all out, I hope. <laughs> no, this is all going in. Screw it. We're so well, far behind. Yeah, There's we not are. not going to be any editing. Yeah, wow. It's just God everything. Bless. But no, um, I've been insanely busy. The COVID spike, uh, we've had a lot of, I've been. I've had 14, 16 hour days. I thought I was going to have a short week last week because I went to class for two days. I even put in for an extra shift to make up hours. And the next two days, I worked like till midnight, two days. Anyway, it's been crazy. Doing my part to help. Flatten that curve. Flatten the curve, people. That's the only thing I want to flatten. Boom. I like to flatten the hills. Straighten, straighten the, the curves. curves. Thank you, sir. You owe me a, a moonshine. We'll get right on that. But first, what you really like to talk about at the top of the show isn't a variety of breads. It's... The Long Con Spring. The Long Con Spring. Isn't that April 23, 24, and 25 of this year? Yes. That's amazing. Did you know it's almost half sold out? Wow. And we've had that up for about three days. So it's hilarious. That. We couldn't get the 50 likes we were hoping that would give us the indication that this was worth doing. There is no mandate from the people. Yeah. Other but, than badge sales. Yeah, but badge sales, hey, money talks and that other stuff walks. So people are buying badges. I'm tickled, which they were discounted, which I'm glad to give a discount. Doom, 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 doom. Sorry. Oops. Anyway. That's not going to get cut out either. You're just going to have to enjoy that. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's just reminding me to get my allergy shot. Speaking of shots, I've got both my shots, but you knew that. But I want the listeners to know. I've mutated a little bit. Just and you weren't even that sore. No. Uh, the first time, no soreness, no ill effects. Second time, my arm was a little sore. Yeah, my wife got both shots. Her arm was a little sore, but other than that, no complaints. Well, that's good. I mean, you know, 
Yeah. We missed you too, listeners. Yeah, we did. We really did. We uh, know this was the kind of content that you were just starved for while we were away. God, yeah. I feel. I, I apologize. Um, so anyway, Long Con Spring, I'm really excited. Yes. It's going to be great. Uh, we already got some games posted. We certainly do. Ooh, and guess who's going to make his triumphant return to Spring Long Con? Me. That's right. Every time we have a con, I make a triumphant return. That's awesome. That's awesome. But don't we have Mr. Robert K. in the in the loop in the pipe? Hopefully. Yeah. We should. He's supposed to. He said he's coming. Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> this is when we need a video podcast. I hate you. <laughs> Not you guys. Him. But anyway. Um, so, about on other news, our good friends at Planet X Games uh, have put out yet another zine, 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 you know, whatever, uh, magic and shit. And what was that? Yeah, and Planet uh, Flactory Two is due to arrive soon. I'm excited about that. And as well, uh, there's a right now. Look for it. It's Gamma Zine Three, done by Tom Wilson, Tom with an H. Really super great guy, and I've got the other two. Great product, anyway, it, for your post-apocalyptic gaming pleasure. That's on Kickstarter right now. Right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, while you're talking about the RPG news, mm -hmm. I'm surprised you didn't mention our good friend David Beatty, mm -hmm. and that Dark Trails is now mm -hmm. known as Weird Frontiers, Frontiers RPG. Oh, no, yeah. I was saving that for you. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Good friends with the old cat daddy. Oh, yeah. He's cool. So we wish him well. And that's changing because of Chaosium's down Darker Trails. Which I own that product. I'm looking forward to using it with Weird Frontiers. But I guess they worked it out amicably. Yeah. I don't think they, He, I think, like I said, his lawyer said he could fight it. But he was like, meh, you know. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Exactly. Precisely. All right, you got anything else before we fully launch into the pop culture world here? Mm, not that I can think of. No, sir. All right, did you come up with any books oh, to talk about? I totally oh, lied. Ha ha, sucker. Um, so the new Dragonlance truly is happening. It is a thing. It's been announced. You remember there was that lawsuit, and we mentioned that before on a podcast and back and forth. Uh, what I read the other day is that indeed uh, there is going to be a dragon lance now this is something that we'd want to mention before or after it, pop culture this sort of thing going forward remember folks no edits in this show you get to hear the whole I love thing that. yeah um because i got something else interesting that's in gaming news sort of in gaming news okay so stuff of legends are you familiar yeah that's my nickname i know so, Steph of Legends, um, it's not something, I don't believe Watts is doing it, but they've endorsed it because it involves 5th edition, D&D, gaming, whatever. And so, it, they make it like it's innovative, but not entirely. It's basically people playing D&D, and then Muppets, puppets, are acting out what their characters are doing. Okay. That sounds fantastic. Again, yeah, this should be a YouTube video. Y'all should see his face, the, the look of disgust and revulsion. So, anywho... There's, of course, wait for it. If there's anything that's D&D in this day and age, someone's got getting upset and there's controversy. So no. one of the characters, no. oh yeah, here it comes, is uh, uh, got, the, the Muppet has rather large breasts and people are really, really upset, uh. terribly. There's Twitter storms happening. So anyway, but as it turned out, the lady who's playing the character, she wanted the puppet made that way. So it wasn't like some misogynist dude or whatever. It was her choice that her Muppet showing her character would have big boobies. So anyway, there's a whole controversy. I refused to get involved with the Muppet titty controversy. <laughs> exactly. And so... I will not engage. But here's the thing that really, doing some research on it, you'd be proud of that. Following ahead. Yeah. Uh, is the whole thing, is the whole show is like shock value crap. And so, really, people are upset about the wrong thing. There's a character named Slippy Richardson. Did that go? 
No, unfortunately, it didn't. Right. Robert Redford. Yeah. So anyway, and his, like his his character is like a quoto or whatever. So he's got poisonous skin. So he runs around naked, and he has his guy roll all over the enemies and like tea bags the goblins and all this stuff. So it's just stupid crap like that for shock value. People want to be upset about something. That's what they and like the guy's bow is called. I can't even say what he calls his bow. It's pretty raunchy. But anyway, so I mean, it's all just shock value crap. But anyway, I just thought that was... Well, well, thank you. My soul has left my body for the rest of this cast. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is the stuff that people are... You know, there's starving babies and you know, people being thrown off buildings and you know we're worried about Muppet boobs. Anyway, all right, so pop culture. Let's go crazy. No, that's it. <laughs> this is the end, folks. This was the final straw. Oh, come on. So you got any books? Uh, no. No books. Oh, God. Hey, man. I've been I busy. have so many books. Really? So many books. Comic books. I don't know, I've book? got an actual book for you, too. So oh, that's right. Uh, Bruce. In your face with Br- can of mace. Bruce Slippy Richardson or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can start with that. With, uh, like I said, reading an actual book. Wow. The autobiography of Bruce Dickinson, the lead singer of Iron Maiden, and it stinks. It's really bad. He's a guy that's had an extremely interesting life because there's been, I don't know, 40 years of just Iron Maiden. Yeah. I mean, and he beat cancer. He was a... Yep. A, like He's a, a cancer survivor. He's a licensed commercial pilot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he was at least a world-ranked fencer at some point. Wow. So you would think this guy has a and lot to talk about. He was a teacher about. before all that, wasn't he? No. Oh, before he got big and rock, he wasn't a teacher. No. Oh, I thought he had some degree or something. Okay, I, I'm thinking of somebody else. I know that one of the guys from Queen is like a astrophysicist or something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So the book stings. Yeah. Really crappy book. He barely talks about any Iron Maiden stuff, which is what you're there for. I mean, yeah. and then as a guy that's had kind of an interesting life, he was already a uh, best-selling author before this book could come out. So you'd think this guy can string some words together, but really he doesn't talk about almost anything that happened in his time in Iron Maiden. It'll be like, we released a record and then we toured. And he's not dishing the dirt is what I'm hearing. Well, there's not even any standard information or like behind the scenes information like, like we did coke off a hooker's butt backstage or something it doesn't you know? even have to be that but i mean you could tell me did you know when we recorded this song we actually had to record it with the guy upside down or we had to get some other guy to come in and play the yeah. solo because the one guy wasn't nailing it Stone out of his mind or, or uh, yeah. like there's the judas priest story about that song metal gods mm-hmm. where at the end of it there's the robot stomping and that's a bunch of uh trays of silverware that they're just slamming down to get that robot stomping noise because you couldn't have Pro Tools and all that back in the day. So oh. there's no cool stories like that. Like, this is how we got this effect. Or some of our really cool art that we've had. Mm-hmm. This is who came up with the idea for that, and this is what we had in mind, and blah, 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 hmm. blah. He doesn't talk about that. He doesn't talk about his family. Wow. So you're like, did you just go through life all by yourself? Yeah. And talking about when he talks about his cancer struggles, mm-hmm. it's like, I know this guy's been married. I know he's got kids. But he's like, you really go through all this by yourself. And he never mentions, like, you know, my family stood by me. Wow. So it's just, I, I don't know. It was, It's weird, and it's not good. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I went on Amazon just to make sure that I'm not the a-hole as usual. Because usually it's me. I, yeah. I'll, I'll own up to that. Yeah. It had a lot of, like, one- and two-star reviews that said the same thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, we hear about you went – on in, during part of a tour you were in Chicago and you went to their fencing club or you learned to fly a 747 and then a 757 and then this and that but wow. really not Whoop that much do. about Iron Maiden and even somebody like if a, I was reading the story of a pilot who'd flown for 40 year, years you'd be like there's going to be some really good stuff that happened in this like oh I had to land in these kind of conditions and this and that yeah. even his piloting stories are not that exciting well, well, that's, I mean, it's sad, really. I mean, because he is, I'm sure, a very interesting person. Maybe if someone else had written it, 
you know, they would have made it more, found a way to make it more exciting. Maybe. So Maybe. I'll have to see if there is a good Iron Maiden book out there. If any yeah. of you listeners know of it, I would think. Maybe a book from Steve Harris's point of view would be good, mm -hmm. but on the flip side, he seems like the kind of guy that is a few words. It'd be like we recorded an album. Fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean, there's some great books on bands like Hammer of the Gods or you know The Dirt by yeah, Motley Crue. Right, right. So it doesn't have to be all the dirt. Like for example, there was a, I think Kiss and Sell, mm -hmm. which was a story story of one of the tour managers that was with Kiss. Hmm. And that's just telling you kind of the financial aspects of it. Interesting. Like uh, they had this massive tour planned because with Kiss, you can kind of follow the trail from when they were a small band and then huge and then nobody again. And then back to the reunion where they got big again for a while. And mm. then, you know, yeah. kind of the ups and downs. So that yeah. was interesting. And just how much stuff costs on tour and what kind of big plans they had and how they spent so much money on this and that. Mm -hmm. So there are some really good books out there, but. This one, I do not recommend it to you, dear friends, hmm. no matter how much you love The Maiden or Bruce Dickinson, because no. I'm still a fan of both, but ugh, that book. Mm -hmm. well, good tip, man. Okay. Comic books. Uh, I read, I am reading the current Thor because we had talked about that some about, you know, what's it come up to. Mm -hmm. So Thor is back, the original Thor, but he's also Odin now. Hmm. He is the king of the gods. Uh, Donald Blake, who was his former alter ego, mm -hmm. is running around killing other versions of Thor. Well, wow, like Beta Ray Bill. Like said. Beta Ray Bill. Uh, Janet Foster was wow. the female Thor for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Thunderstrike. We This part of the podcast we had talked about a little bit before. So it yeah. was like that was the <clears throat> Thor of the gritty 90s when you had U.S. Agent as the gritty Captain America and War Machine as the gritty Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, I finished Dear Becky, which is, I don't know what you call that, the epilogue to The Boys. Mm -hmm. I did not really enjoy The Boys, the comic. Mm -hmm. I don't really like, what is it, Garth Ennis or whatever, mm -hmm. most of his stuff. It's not for me. There's a lot of shock value just for sure. giggles. I love the show. Yeah, the show's great. So if you love the show, check out the comic. But, man, not a fan. it's just... This is one of the cases where, in my opinion, they really approved off of the source material. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Conan the Frost Giant's Daughter. That one. We had talked about that yeah. in the podcast that wasn't. <laughs> and that one, if you need a Conan story with a lot of boobies, yeah. this one's for you. This story has been told a million times, and usually it takes about one comic. Mm -hmm. This one, they stretch it out over three like so it's Hobbit. really dragging, like, yeah, doing the Hobbit movie, where it's like there's not that much material, and then it's a lot of gratuitous booby, which with Conan, you get a lot of booby. Yeah, so mean, for me to say this one's gratuitous, whoa, this is wow. really above and beyond. It's and like a little, little bit softcore, you know. <laughs> it's just like, okay, move along, yeah. get, get to it. So we'll see how that one goes in the future, but it all wrapped up. It took three uh, issues to do so though so I would recommend you go back to the Dark Horse comics with Kurt Busiek mm -hmm. which I love his run of Conan back then probably in the early 2000s mm -hmm. so check that out and I'll let you know where this one goes yeah uh, let's see oh and here's yet another one for you because what have we had pretty much a month now mm -hmm. so as much as I have raved about the Immortal Hulk mm -hmm. the writer of that is Al Ewing, I think, mm -hmm. he also writes, we only find them when they're dead. Which, just right off the bat there, that's kind of a catchy title, don't you think? Yeah. So, what is this guy talking about? Mm -hmm. So, this is a sci-fi where there are space miners, mining in space, mm -hmm. not young people in space. Mm -hmm. So, with this here mining, what are they mining? Well, they were mining comets, but they've pretty much, at this point in the far-flung future, tapped out that resource. Mm -hmm. When they start finding these bodies, these massive dead gods, kind of just appear in their reality, but they only find them when they're dead. They've never seen them alive. And then they mine the parts of that. Oh, wow. Like, go ahead. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Were they mining dead gods? Well, yeah, there's the thing like in the first movie where they, they actually fly to a thing where 
it's a like a gigantic dead god. You remember the first movie? Oh, barely. Yeah, but that was the part of the theme was it seemed like yeah they were they flew into landed and there were people are in there taking out parts of the body or whatever of a gigantic dead god. Yeah, so they're massive to the scale that they actually have to have ships to cut them. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Galactus or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the same thing. They're harvesting pieces of the gods. So is there something about their physiology that's particularly valuable or is it just like, ooh, ooh, this is a rare commodity? Or A little bit of both. They don't really go into the details. It's like everybody wants part of the heart because that one's got special properties or you might want this or that like different mining ships are claiming different parts of the body hmm. but just straight up protein because at one point they claim the cheek okay. and there's nothing special about that but it's straight up protein they're going to sell it as meat oh wow so weird but it's just because it's so massive yeah you got a lot of it to sell so anyway interesting as much as I've praised the Hulk I've read about seven issues of that now not really that good and mm. the art ugh. yeah so I just everything stinks today after you told me that Muppet story I ruined it but the new Thor I'll say that one's going really good Immortal Hulk is getting close to the end so hopefully they stick the landing on that one yeah because it's been great and that's what I have for books all right and I remember I'd mentioned that I intend to hope to try to read uh, Transmetropolitan isn't that the name of the yeah book? in the cast that wasn't we talked about doing that as a little uh, book club book or whatever club kind of thing comparing notes because that's one you've never read but that's part of the like if you ever if you ever read 10 comics one of them should be that particular one it's got um like Jerusalem spider, spider Jerusalem spider Jerusalem or whatever it's supposed to be a really iconic character and blah 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 so I intend to try to read that all right. Do you have any movies? Oh, do I ever. So, Good. All right. I'm going to take 10. Yeah, you go. So forever, you know, I'm trying to be, look out for y'all. And I dig up these gems from yesteryear and torture myself. Because some of them I have fond, I think I do, like, oh, I watched that when I was 12 or 13 on late night cable. And it was great. And then I go back and watch them like, oh, God, that was awful. And so it's like uh, one of those is Prisoners of the Lost Universe from 1983. It has Richard Hatch, who played uh, Apollo on the original Battlestar Galactica. And it's got John Saxon, who died not too long ago. And uh, John Saxon was just a great villain, you know. And, I mean, but it's the acting is not the best. Uh, the storyline's not the best. But um, it, I, I enjoyed it to some degree. Absolutely, I did. It was kind of uh, fun to see that again. But it's funny. They're supposed to be in Los Angeles, and the steering wheels are on the right. I'm like, really? Come on, you know. But anyway, um, and I want to think some of the cast look like people that were in Hawk the Slayer. So there might have been some connection there, you know. Because that's around the same time frame, isn't it? Early 80s? I believe so. Yeah. Um, and then I watched 1983's The New Barbarians, um, which is, you know, post APOC. And uh, it's free on YouTube and Raygun, which Raygun's interesting. Uh, you can watch a lot of these really terribly bad, awful old movies for free, and rightfully so. On Ray Gun, it's a streamer. Uh, but yeah, whew, no, New Barbarians is really poopy. Um, the world, like, like a line from the movie, the world is dead. It raped itself. I'm like, great writing there. Um, <clears throat> so, in every, so in the in the nuclear holocaust, apparently, it's all about big shoulder pads. Because <laughs> I mean, the bad guys have got really big shoulder pads. But there's kind of this like thorn convention on its head, like the bad guys wear white and the good guys wear black, you know. And the main character is Scorpion, you know. He's a fighter, but he keeps getting his butt kicked, and his buddy Nader shows up and saves his hash each time, you know. But he's like, get away, Nader, you know. And it's like, the guy saved your life a couple of times. You could treat him a little nicer, but anyway. But yes, and the bad guys have these little. Prius golf carts or whatever that they'll try to run someone down and it takes like 15 minutes and they're like huh, 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 running and they've got this blade on an arm sticking out and it's like you know like run them down or not but there's like these they'll be running and zigzagging and serpentine and you're like yep come on <laughs> get that go-kart moving that they have to drag it out so they can hit feature length I guess or something I mean it's just really it's it, that's one that's so bad it, it's bad like, I actually, to some degree, enjoyed, like I said, Prisoners of the Lost Universe. But now, the new Barbarians, 
you know, your mileage may vary, but I mean, it's pretty bad. Um, but I will say it's the 80s, so you get silhouetted simulated sex. Say that mm. three times fast. And, uh, but anyway, but there's also a scene of buggery. I was like, whoa. Ugh. Um, but anyway, yeah. So those were pretty bad. And then Conquest, 1983. So the, apparently 83 had a lot of really good, bad, post apoc fantasy movies. My first indicators that this wasn't going to be your average Conan ripoff, four guys dressed up like Smokey the Bear rip a cave girl into quarters, snort drugs with a nude sorceress, witch babe with a body from heck, who then copulates already style with her companion Python while having a vision. It was like, oh my, this is... So it was, they again, got to it in a hurry, huh? Yeah, I mean, they didn't waste any time. You know, it was pretty pretty wild. But, you know, like I said, the 80s, that's like when you're a teenage boy late night cable and, and unsupervised. Uh, I mean, yeah, you could see some pretty wild stuff. That one is it's bad, but, you know, it has its moments. But anyway, so those were, that's my contribution. Well, while we're going back to the 80s, oh, yeah. something else that I have raved about is Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Steph started watching it. She loves it. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I've gone back and I've seen Karate Kid. I was not the biggest fan. It's an mm -hmm. 80s classic. I recommend it to you if you're having like your 80s flashback weekend or something. Mm -hmm. It's not a movie that you must see, but if you want a classic 80s movie, a classic. that's one of them. It's a classic 80s movie, yeah. So I'll watch the second one to get ready for the second season, which was it the second season or was it the third season? How are we doing this? But anyway, so the, the uh, latest and greatest season dealt with some of the stuff from Karate Kid 2. Like he goes mm -hmm. back over to Okinawa. Yeah. So that wasn't a very good movie, but I'm somewhat glad I watched it just so everything would fit together. Mm -hmm. So getting ready for the next season, they're supposed to be bringing in some elements of Karate Kid 3. Oh, so they tied this, this, the given season to the given movie. Oh, interesting. So Karate Kid 3 is just freaking awful. Yeah. I probably didn't have to tell anybody out that. I think it's That's why they didn't make notoriously it panned or whatever you want to say. Yeah. But, yeah, it is just really awful mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of some like examples like his Daniel son's love interest in this is not a love interest because he I think he was like 29 at the time of the filming as the karate kid and she was really 16 oh, wow. and he's like a this is gonna make my wife upset if I'm having some on-screen romance and then B it's just generally creepy. creepy because he's that much older than her yeah. so he gets a best friend interest oh and a there's just some of the interest. most incredible acting that you're ever going to see. But I don't, I, I can't remember if we've talked about this movie. I would think that we have John Carpenter's vampires. Uh, I think we've touched on it. But. The main vampire in that, Janos, mm -hmm. is, I guess, the primary bad guy in this one. Oh. So that was like his first movie role and everything. So that was kind of funny to see him in it. And he's really hamming it up. Oh, so wow. if you like to see people chew the scenery. Yeah. This one's for you for you but yeah it was really bad but we'll see if this all ties into the next season of Cobra Kai yeah do we, now do we talk about this I think I read somewhere that people have said there's a, th a theory of sorts for big fans of the original big, movie big fans that uh, basically Daniel is kind of the bad guy if you look at it from a certain angle or whatever isn't that so that's the popular thing to do now too, though. Yeah, it's like actually say. Luke Skywalker was the bad guy if you look at it from the Emperor side or something. Yeah, but that's what they say. Don't they kind of in the show portray that a little bit? Well, everybody is the hero of their own story. Exactly. So of course Johnny tells you that like, and that kid kept screwing with me and trying to steal my girlfriend. So mm -hmm. yeah, from his point of view. Mm -hmm. Daniel could be a bad guy. But I mean, that's like, I used to beat up this kid at school and then one day he stole my girlfriend. He's the worst. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and it's like, yeah, I mean, looking back, there was a, a kid that when he grew up years later, someone mentioned my name around him. He's like, I hate Matt Glad. He was a jerk. We were kids. And I'm like, I don't even know what he's talking about. But apparently I must have. You were the villain in his story. Exactly. I rubbed him the wrong way at some point as kids. And I'm thinking, what did I do? I wish I could see him because I would somewhere I'd go, dude, whatever I did, I'm sorry. I can't even remember, you know. The more people that I meet, the more I hear that about Matt. Ha uh ha, -huh, whatever. People love me. I'm Anybody beloved. that's known Matt longer than I'm me. I'm beloved. Anyway. Um. I'm sure of it. So here's another movie for you. Mm -hmm. Hail Caesar. 
the Coen Brothers movie. Did you see that one? No. I've seen a few of the Coen Brothers movies. So how do you feel about Coen Brothers movies? Mixed. I mean, some are great and some are like, yeah. So there's a few gems. I'm definitely not the person that's like, I love all their movies. Mm -hmm. There's, they do um, the Ballad of Buster Scuggs or whatever, right? Yeah, which we enjoy. So, I mean, that one's freaking fantastic. But I yeah, think. Phenomenal. What's the one? Uh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. Eh. Yeah. And what's the one with The Dude Abides? The Big Lebowski? I think the that's Big the Big Lebowski, which is, oh, a cult classic. And like, eh, it's it doesn't do right. anything I, for I'm, me. I'm not, I mean, I, it's not a bad movie, but I'm not. Not many people like, oh, man. And then um, you figure they also did. Uh, now, one I really enjoy was the one with the, oh, the, the car salesman played by Macy. And he kills his. He, he, he has Fargo? Yeah, Fargo. Thank you. Kind of meh on that really? one. So I mean, See, I've, I've always been. I'm not like, oh man, it's some of the highest form of cinema ever. But I, out of their repertoire, that's one I'm more fond of. I'll say. But Hail Caesar, mm -hmm. kind of falls in that same. It's okay. Mm -hmm. There was a few sensible chuckle. The movie, mm -hmm. uh, George Clooney's playing a really pompous, airheaded actor. Wow, so that's I can a tell you're a big Clooney fan. Yeah, but that was kind of funny. He plays. He plays that well. As Matt's face would tell you right now. Yeah, I, I, what a what a stretch for him there. What was the guy really smug? I thought it was a real acting stretch for him. He was really airheaded, yeah. vacuous. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't hate the man, but I'll go out of my way to avoid movies he's in. I'll put it that way. Yeah, we'll have to make a list of actors for that pretty soon, won't we? Yeah, because that's like there's some of one to watch, like the men who stared at goats. Nope. He was in it. I finally watched Brother Where Art Thou? Finally, but just because I was like, all right, I got to watch this. But I avoided it for so long because he's in it. But I'm a man of conviction, you know, in that regard. Hmm. Like if, if, if you don't agree with the way a business does something, I'm not going to trade with him. I'm not going to give him my money, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I don't want to give away too many of the twists and turns. There's really one big reveal that's pretty funny. But yeah, I don't want to spoil it here, so yeah. I will leave that. For you to check out if you like the coen brothers this is probably more of the same and you will enjoy it if you yeah. don't like them it's probably the same thing so it's not really segues into gaming or the normal nerd culture stuff so i didn't think to mention it but i mean since you're talking about lc's uh i uh we we devoured the first three seasons of yellowstone Are is that familiar? a tv show it is a tv show on the peacock network paramount so you have no more movies oh tv Yep, it's a TV show. My bad. Anyway, but you were done, right? We'll get movies? him trained. Are you done with movies? So the other movie that I wanted to talk about, no, nah, just kidding, folks. See, anyway. TV shows. Yeah, Yellowstone. Take it away, Yellowstone. Yeah, it's. It, I will say this. Like the first season, we really enjoyed it. The second season, halfway through, I'm like, I don't like anybody on this show. Make like every character's loathsome. And even it's funny around that time when uh, Costner's son, one of them says, look out for those guys, Daddy. They're They're – they're bad men or devils. And he goes, son, there are no angels left. I mean, you know, we're all devils. And I mean, how ap apropos, because right about that episode, I'm like, oh, Steph, I don't know if I want to watch this anymore. But she's like, come on, let's power through. And yeah, one or two more episodes later, and like, all right, there's a couple characters I'm liking. And then by the third season, I'm back to where like, all right, I like a lot of the characters. Or the ones that, the ones you don't like are the ones you're supposed to not like. Wink, I want to say Sons of Anarchy kind of got like that in the further seasons, mm -hmm. where it was kind of like, everybody's because it was so soap opery which is there's nothing wrong with that but everybody had a little bit of some sort of dirty deed that they'd mm -hmm. done where you're like well i would like you but remember last season you did this yeah and yeah and that's it i mean everybody's done some dirty deeds or kind of loathsome or whatever to some degree but watching their actions they make them do some things you're like well they've done some respectable or decent deeds but god they've got some skeletons to, i mean you know so but overall it's a pretty good show i will say unlike in this stage i don't don't can't remember any nudity or gratuitous sex but there is some language and violence so i will say if you're adverse to uh foul language or which you, know, you are oh so very uh or violence you know then yeah well, i remember you weren't into deadwood because there was too much filthy language. Well, I mean, it, it, but it's kind of like, kind of, we're talking about that showman to go with the puppet boobies, whatever, just doing stuff for shock value. It was like shock value. It's like, it's like we're on HBO and we can be profane. Let's push the limit. Let's go over the top with it. It's like, okay, I get it. You're allowed to use profanity. It's the old West. But I mean, you know, 
it, sometimes it got a little, I think, heavy-handed. It's kind of like, I know you're a big fan of um, Deadwood. Spartacus, right? And, yeah, I'm trying to think what that was. Stars? Stars. Spartacus. And I went to watch it, and, I mean, it's just like, I don't have a problem with nudity, but, I mean, everywhere you look, there's just everyone, things are flopping around every other scene, and if they're not, there's blood sprays 50 feet now being bright red let's go back and blood. think about these movies Matt's just telling us about, his classic yeah. 80s movies, yeah. where, what was it again? The four guys in Smokey the Bear costumes yeah. rip apart a chick uh -huh. then do smoke some drugs uh -huh. and then the sorceress chick Does with the body from stuff. heck yeah with the python has sex with a snake yeah pretty but, much but folks there's naked bodies in Spartacus so you might no, want to it's not again it's not I have no problem with nudity but I mean it's like, like just over the top like constantly just constantly constantly which is again I'm saying it's not something I wouldn't watch but it was just like wow really but it's like woohoo we're on cable we'll walk around naked constantly and use the F word every other word and it's like <sighs> well, there's two shows I fucking love exactly we're since gonna... I since I ha haven't got to talk about a lot of things that I enjoyed this time so far yeah and uh one that we've got in common that we really like was Rome. Rome. I wait for you to say. I was a love, lot of love, love. If you've ever seen Rome, decent amount of nudity, go, and a decent, exactly. amount, decent amount of uh, vulgarities. Yeah, and there's a bit, quite a bit of violence, but it's not heavy-handed. So we'll leave that to determine for yourselves, viewers. Yeah, but definitely check that out. But too. yeah, if you haven't watched Rome, go watch it, dude. It's it's unless, of course, again, there's a little nudity, there's a little language, there's a, there's a little violence. But anyway, you but, got any other shows? No, sir. You. Have you heard of the Queen's Gambit on Netflix? Yeah, I've seen pictures of That's the, the red-haired lady paying hot thing right now. Chess or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. didn't look like my cup of tea. If you enjoy story, stories about orphaned children being addicted to tranquilizers, this is a show for you. I thought it was like about she's some chess prodigy or something. She is, but do you know what the gasoline for her chess genius is? drinks green pills little green pills that makes total sense of course so it's good jen really liked it i was surprised that she enjoyed it so much my wife mm -hmm. but it is a story of a woman rising in a male dominated yeah. area to become the best around so it was good she would say it was great but there's a lot of drug use, if that's what Oh, my. Yeah. Matt. It does, actually. Now, let's see. Oh, here's one that I know you've been watching. Mm -hmm. Attack on Titan. That's one of my animes. I knew that. It'd give me that much. I knew that it was an anime. And, so I, that's I'm, coming, and I'm aware of it. That's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. And wow, what a roller coaster ride this has been. If you'd asked me a season or so ago, I'd been like, well, if you asked me the first season, I'd be like, this is fantastic. This is the best thing ever. And then the next season, I'd probably been like, nah, they really dropped the ball. And now coming back again, I think this is the fourth and final season. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is crazy. It started off really like, here's a whole nother cast of characters. And you're like, I don't care. But they tied it in. And you're like, okay, now this is why you care. And they did a good job of tying it in. And they did in. a good job of it. Because we talked about that recently. In some comics, they try to do tying these new characters, and they don't uh, seal the deal, you know. But what started off as a kind of, not medieval, but around that same sort of technology, uh, they have cannons. So whatever time period that puts you up to, like uh, Revolutionary War sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And they have these giants that are going around trying to eat them. Oh, my. But they don't have, like, high technology or mm -hmm. magic or that sort of thing where they can fight them. They pretty much just got to fight them using muscle and, you know, their fancy swords. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. And then it turns into uh, the world's actually bigger than you think it is. All this is just happening on one tiny island, and there's a world war going on. Wow. And instead of atomics, really, you have these giants. Hmm. That's how they're, that's the super weapon. Oh, wow. So it really goes from the small story of what's going on in this area. And you think, oh, that's the whole world. No, it isn't. There's a real whole world. And this is just the tiny, tiniest fraction of it. Hmm. So not to give anything away too much, but wow. I would yeah. definitely check that out if it sounds interesting to you. That does. I'm going to want to check it out now. And if it you like the animes. 
I don't like animes. I like animated uh, stuff, so eh, whatever. You don't know. You don't know nothing. Of it. Oh, wow. Here's an unusual one for me, and this is how long it's been since we've talked about this because yeah. I watched this long ago. The Last Dance, the story of the Chicago Bulls final season. Yeah. No, this who is another you? time when you need a video cast so you can see <laughs> Matt's face. I'm like, who, who, who are you? What? What? So it's the story of the team. Mm -hmm. They talk about the last season, but there's, I think, 10 episodes. So they keep going back and it'll be like, this is Scottie Pippen's episode. And this is Tony Kuko and blah, 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 blah. Instead of, I wish it had just been the last season and it had been about two episodes long. Mm -hmm. So it was over long for me. Mm -hmm. But if you think back to like the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. when it was Jordan Mania, oh, yeah. that's really a throwback that it takes you back in the time machine and you're like, Oh, yeah, I remember that when, like, Michael Jordan was the biggest, oh, most popular dude on the face of the earth. He was in Space Jam. He was in commercials. He His sneakers sold through the roof. Blah, 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 yeah. Be like Mike and drink that Gatorade. That's right. So it's probably no secret to anybody that Michael Jordan's not the nicest guy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But one of the things that I think that we, me and you, could appreciate is how he talks about all these little slights and how he was fueled by anger and the team was fueled by anger. Like, if the one team did this, then he would take it as a personal insult and be like, oh, really? Then I'm going to do that. Uh, if you're like, oh, this guy can, can keep up with me and he can cover me. Or this guy is the hot new rookie. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, this guy's going to be the next Jordan. That he takes offense to that. Mm -hmm. And he crushes that guy whenever he comes up against him in a game. Wow. So that was pretty cool. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I can... I yeah. can identify with this. Yeah. You need a little anger to motivate you through your day, don't oh, you think? Sometimes, yeah. When people tell you you can't do things. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of that where he, I think it was more imagined slights. Like sure. they'd go back and talk to the guy and they're like, I didn't do anything to him. Well, he, he, you know, he hit me a few times on the court. I didn't do anything. No, he definitely hit me. So I felt like I had to crush him in every game for the rest of his life from then on. Yeah. So Jeez. that was kind of funny. Now that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah wow. Definitely worth checking out, but I don't know if you're going to stick around for the whole ride. Yeah. Of course, I have to. Because that's a, just me. I'm that guy. You're, you're a completionist, yeah. But do you have any other movies? Or TV? No. All right. Well, we've made it this far in, and we've got the books, the movies, and the TV covered, but we don't have games covered. Oh, do you have my. some games to talk about? You're an ESO Plus member now, so I'm sure you want to talk about that. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Pass, huh? Now, actually, the Brotherhood uh, quest line wasn't bad. I, I had paid, you know, for it. So I enjoyed that to a certain degree. That's one of the ones they put some little detail into. But, I mean, it's basically go assassinate this person, blah, blah, blah. Don't get seen while you're doing it. And ruin their favorite harp while you're there, you know. Okay. The funny thing with that, with you getting the ESO Plus, is about... Ten minutes later, they had like a, a free, free week, week. Like jerks. of ESO Plus. Mm -hmm. So I got in there, and I did all the same stuff, and I actually that finished did. the Thieves Guild stuff, uh -huh. which that was okay, but it's a lot of – it's pretty samey, which is probably an MMO thing. Mm -hmm. Go here and steal this guy's stuff. Go here and steal ten things without getting caught. Yeah. But it, I thought it had a pretty interesting story, the overarching one about uh, getting rid of the Iron Wheel that force and restarting things. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, uh, we actually got together and played some Monster Hunter World. Yes, we did. With Cody and Gary. Yeah, it was fun. I had, I had a lot of fun. We need to do it again. And they didn't. Oh, but uh, you finally figured out how to get your really broken armor in that game. Mm -hmm. I figured out where there's really broken weapons. Ooh la la. So I have to hook you up with that. I was like, yeah. oh my God, it's so broken. But Monster Hunter World is a game that I love. Uh, it's got the Iceborne add-on, which I haven't even touched. So there's a lot of content left for me. So if you're playing Monster Hunter World on the PlayStation, mm -hmm. hit us up. Yeah. And you can get some free monster hunting help. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, mm. I got in the mail today Mortal Shell. Mortal Shell. For the PS4, which I don't think you'd heard of before, right? Nope, never heard of it. I was actually watching somebody online play it, and it looks fantastic. It's definitely a Dark Souls ripoff, uh -huh. and I played it just a little bit. I basically did the 
tutorial or whatever, the starting level, mm -hmm. it's really slow. Oh, wow. So your movements and stuff as compar compared to like Dark Souls 3 where it's all about roll, 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 roll. So I have to see how I get used to that. And I almost feel like going back and comparing it to Dark Souls 1 because oh, that's wow. a much slower version of the game. Mm -hmm. So that one, it looks good. I've got it. I got it for like 10 bucks. Wow. So you can't go wrong with that. No. So I'll keep you guys in the loop on what Mortal Shell turns out to be. Oh, uh, and an actual board game for a change. No. Oh. Uh, Planet over there by, what is it? Blue Orange Games. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a really good game. It meets our criteria of can you take it out of the box and play it in just a few minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. So right there you almost get three stars just for showing up and being playable right out of the box. Yeah. Like the Sweet Spot is a game that doesn't isn't going to be really hard to learn and teach the basics of it. And you can play a game in about 45 minutes. I think that's kind of like my sweet spot, you know, for board so games. So this one is you've got a planet. Each player has their own planet. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a sphere that you're putting tiles on. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool gimmick. And we're going to draft tiles. Oh. So we'll get five of them and it'll be like, this has two ocean pieces and two uh, glacier pieces and one desert piece. Mm -hmm. Or this one has five ocean pieces. Mm -hmm. icons in it it's the different ways that you make up the lands okay so you do that and you, you're drafting your pieces and you'll have a card that tells you you want to be a mountainous planet or you want to be a desert planet or you want to be covered with water that sort of thing and you're going to get points for that hmm. so you go okay i'm going to take as many tiles that have water on them as possible mm -hmm. okay the other trick to it is you're also kind of drafting animals as you go hmm so, for example, if the shark comes up, mm -hmm. you want the, between us, who's going to win it is who has the most water tiles on their planet. So it's, it maybe sounds more complicated. No, not particularly. It's just that face because you guys don't get the video cast. Uh, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, they're behind my eyes. I'm sitting there going, okay, I get it. Yeah, I mean, you know, water planet, shark, but, you know, I'm just, yeah. no, it makes sense. It doesn't sound overly now, really simple. I mean, you can play it with the kids because they get like the kangaroo wants to live in the desert type of area, the dry mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and the penguins want to live on the glaciers, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, I mean, there's a small amount of learning, I guess, if you're playing with kids. The age is like what, you know, what's the age group? Probably, you know, pretty. Yeah, it's probably one of those like 7 to 70s. Yeah. So, no, sounds cool. It takes 30 minutes. Per game, so mm -hmm. it says there's 12 rounds in it. Mm -hmm. I played it with my wife the other day. It took us about an hour, and that was completely, we didn't know what we were doing and mm -hmm. scoring it and all that. Yeah, so, that's not bad. No. We would definitely get that time down the more that we played it. So I definitely recommend that out there to you folks if you're looking for a new game to play in the time of the COVID. COVID. Planet is really cool. Check it out. Available at Geek World. Ooh, la, la. Get that free plug in there. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope they're doing well. I think they are. Oh, yeah. The last time I talked to them, they said they were doing fantastic business. Yeah, we'll go figure. And then, um, which, you know, they're great folks. Uh, and uh, Good things to good people. Yeah, we got to go check out Boards and Bites. One of these days, I want to go do that. Yeah, that's where basically they are also the play area for geek world now yeah because geek world is not allowing anybody to play in their store but yeah. they will direct you down to yeah. boards and bites mm -hmm. and that's the restaurant so they go by the restaurant rules so ding 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 yeah as long as you got something in your face yeah. you don't have to wear a mask this sandwich has a force field against covid so no, 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 no. there you go all right i think that's all of the pop culture as we are 50 minutes into this thing wow so would you like to continue, or would you like to pick up our topic some other time? Well, let's pick up our topic, if you're game. I am, if you are. Oh, absolutely. Listeners, no, no. you can go ahead and pause this now and come back later when you want to hear it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you might want to go take a But sandwich. the topic, as I ready. understand it, is the positive effects of gaming. Yes, indeed. Because we, not to say that we've our topic matter has been somewhat negative, maybe, lately. So we thought, let's do something positive. Which, since this one's kind of a re-record, and I always love when we do that. Yeah. Because we don't know if we're talking about something that we actually talked on a previous podcast or not. Yeah. 
we did our Dungeons and Dramas, mm -hmm. and we Which talked we about our buddy Sean mm -hmm. had kind of got a little upset with us and slammed the door. Or a lot of upset with us, but yeah. Well, he has come back. He's come back to us. He's rejoined the band. Back the band the is fold. back together again. Mm -hmm. So he was a big man in that. He realized that he was probably a little hasty in slamming the door. Mm -hmm. So he reopened the door, and we were happy for him to walk back through. Absolutely. And next week, we should be getting together and playing a little D&D &D with the and old crew. I'm looking forward to it. You know, they're, they're a great bunch of guys, yeah. all of them. So that started off as a negative topic, but it's got a happy ending now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, yeah. And he actually went back and has listened to that podcast, and he said that had uh, kind of revealed a lot of things to him. He didn't know how we felt about it. Lines of communication, baby. Yeah. But Matt tried to blame that one all on me, and it turned out it was Matt's fault. So just to set the record straight. It's always my Matt's fault. fault. What are you talking about? As my mother would tell you, I'm the worst, you know. All right. So now we'll turn it over to the worst to talk about some of the positive effects of gaming. Yeah. So and it's one of those things uh, uh, I could tie some of this into personal stories, but, um, you know, uh, you know, gaming, in video gaming, there's some overlap, but video gaming, tabletop gaming is different. But as far as tabletop, role-playing, gaming, I would say, first of all, creativity comes to mind, you know. Because um, you figure as a GM or game master, game mistress, you're crafting the story, you're telling the story. And as a player, you're crafting your, your PC, your player character, and you're acting out the player character. So there's all these opportunities for creativity and so I think that's really great to encourage that. Yeah, and I'll say in, like, if we were playing Monster Hunter or ESO, mm -hmm. if we're playing, we're both passive in it in a way because mm -hmm. neither one of us are the game master. None of us is having to create that world and put in that work. Yeah. So that gives you an outlet as a GM to be like, you know, I had this idea that I'm going to have a, a girl in a, uh, like, abandoned hotel and then her mom has been bitten by zombies and when the party comes in she's going to scream at all of them mm -hmm. and what will happen after that whereas in a video game that just happens to you because it's programmed in mm -hmm. and maybe they haven't thought of something like that yeah. that they haven't used that idea and then mm -hmm. as a player you have a lot more freedom on how your character is going to react mm -hmm. it's not like are you going to hit them or are you going to run which is pretty much a video game logic right whereas in a uh, role-playing game you could say i'm gonna jump up and climb through the ceiling i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go there mm -hmm. in a lot of games you can't even talk to them right that wouldn't be an example or there's so, just a set uh tree it wouldn't be an option yeah yeah there's like the three th responses or something you can give and you're like i wouldn't say any of these three yes things. no snarky yes yeah so anyway so that's it's the the free form the creativity i think that's a big thing and thank you for elaborating on that it was awesome crafting now this is the one that's a little different is like mini painting dungeon drawing set building world crafting and that ties into creativity too maybe the world crafting under both but yeah there are some people that go ah, i'll buy a box set or i'm not going to go into great detail but there's some people that and they'll craft a whole darn world for their well you know, know what the first thing that comes to my mind is what's that ron oh yeah i mean he loves painting ron movies. has been in the hobby a couple of years yeah hard and to he discovered that. painting mm -hmm. and he's got a natural talent for it absolutely he does so he does a fantastic job of it and even mm -hmm. if he stopped playing role-playing games tomorrow i think he would continue the painting of the minis yeah, yeah. so he found a i don't know if you want to call it a sub hobby of the hobby Mm -hmm. But he, yeah, he found another hobby with this hobby. Exactly. And so that's, that's the thing, like I said, the positive aspects that he's discovered. And I'll tell you, painting can be so relaxing. Not like, for me. Yeah. But I know, like, for me, painting miniatures, I'll just zone in and the world melts away. But, yeah, yeah. Ron is like that. And I think yeah. Garrett. Oh, yeah. And uh, just to put in a plug for Cody, too. Oh, Cody's he hasn't been he hasn't been painting his that long. Natural talent, and he's got another one of those natural talents. It, it's it's. I mean, I'm I'm not just because I'm not that guy, but it is. I'm happy for him that that someone who's just pick it up and to be that good. I mean, he's really good natural talent. Like I worked many years to hone to be as good as I am. You know, my first, I, I still keep my first paint miniature because it's such a terrible, terrible paint job. 
that if I go, have I really improved that much? I go pull that out and I go, oh yeah, yeah, Ooh, oof, I've improved a lot. So, but first time out of the box, I mean, yeah, Cody's a phenomenal painter. But for me, since I am not a painter, mm -hmm. the world building would definitely be my jam. Yeah, and then you I did a, that a great job with that home campaign. You did that that uh, sandbox. That was a lot of fun and really neat. So yeah, you know, there's your your outlet. And I want to say set building is like, if you ever notice, like I've actually made terrain pieces to use really more with uh, tabletop combat, but you can tie some of that into your role playing games. There are people that do set pieces. For stuff. example, Death House. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, that's, and again, I don't know, that's one that I'm kind of torn on where it's like, oh, it looks really cool, but I'm not a prop comic either. So yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's funny that like, I'm unloading a lot of minis and stuff right now because I'm moving to be more and more of a minimalist. Like when it's like you come full circle as a kid, a poor kid from the country, there weren't that many ask, getting your hands on miniatures wasn't easy or having the money or whatever, or them being available. And so we just used pennies and nickels and things. And we didn't have like a big fancy mat or whatever, you know, and then in recent years, I've used all these miniatures and maps and terrain pieces, and now I'm like coming full circle, but that's a whole other conversation. It's me rubbing off on them. Yeah, I'm better, the minimalist. You better quit rubbing off on me. No. Anyway, social aspect. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Friendships are forged, sometimes long term, you know. <laughs> Friendships are forged and broken. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. But I mean, you got to figure about, we've been gaming together now for Good Lord, it's hard to believe, like 10 years or Pretty something. Pretty much all my friends started as gaming friends now. There you go. Me and Gary have been friends, good night, for, for years. yeah, like, yeah, like 40-something years or whatever. And it's through gaming is the, that's kind of kept the, that's the common denominator. And there's people that I introduced, you know, Gary to or, or whatever through gaming. And then they became friends with him. So, yeah, I mean, so there's, plus the, the social aspect of being at a table together, or even if you're on computers in the time of the COVID, I mean, there's still, there's a social aspect and there's going to be, Hey Fred, how you been? You know, and talking across social the table. Hour. Yeah. Social. I can remember gaming sessions where I would just sit there as GM with my, you know, chin in my hand where the first 30 minutes of the sessions, everybody's like, catching up what, what's been going on the past week. And I don't ever get mad about that because I'm like, you know, I'm glad to see the people are forming some sort of friendship. I mean, we've had that discussion, I think, on a podcast that you think your friends will be put a game because I've seen them every day, I mean, uh, every week for years, and then they drift away and you never hear from them again. You go, oh, I thought we were pals. But still, uh, there are friendships that get forged. Well, even as antisocial as I like to joke about being, uh -huh. that is the biggest aspect for me is getting together with people. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, would, would, what, would you elaborate on that or share anything else? No, I wouldn't. Good. Um, and so one of the things I think a skill it teaches people or you can learn through the, it is management, teamwork, and leadership. I felt those were all kind of under, you know, same subset there. But... I'll say that um, as a kid, uh, I was, I had a bad stutter. I was shy. I was kind of a chubby kid, you know. And so D&D, uh, &D, I think, helped me to break out of your shell. Yeah, or whatever. Because, I mean, here when you're playing a game where, well, I'm playing this role and being dynamic and, uh, and, and, and then all of a sudden with, it's my friends I'm comfortable with and I'm like, we should do this and we should go there. And all of a sudden it's like, boom, we're, we're doing that. And I'm having to talk to the Lord of the realm and that's not me. It's this night, but I'm like, listen, can't, you know, and whatever. And so I think I'll say that for me, it helped me to grow as a kid. You know what I mean? I like to get out of my comfort zone and grow. So I you know props to gaming, you know? But as far as, like I said, management, teamwork, leadership, it's like the one time it was me, you, John, and Cody, and Cody was kind of newish, and you were like, all right, who's going to be the party's leader in game? Like the town leader says to our group, and we all pointed at Cody, and he's like, wait, what? And But we were like, let Cody be the leader, be, because a lot of times me or John, you would be the presumed, you know, like we're the old hands, old role players, we, the, we're going to be take charge kind of guys, we wanted to let Cody have that role, you know, and plus it's, you know, um, it's, I mean, the man runs his own business. I'm not saying he probably understands teamwork management, and all that stuff and leadership anyway, but yeah. Um, would you expound upon that, sir? I'm already a natural leader, so I don't know that one so much. 
I mean, yeah, okay. I just don't have a personal anecdote to be like, this is how D and D yeah made me a better leader. But I mean, you figure about do you agree that management? Because sometimes half the party wants to do one thing, half wants to do another, and you have to kind of herd the cats and stuff. You know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else you call that. Um, problem resolution skills. Yeah. yeah. Put, it, <laughs> put it on your resume, folks. Yeah, no, seriously. Um, and I would say critical thinking. Absolutely. I think uh, a I'll gaming. Be a problem solver. Yeah. Um, so, because, yeah, you got to figure. Um, and when I say to, to help you kind of understand when I say critical thinking is, Say you have a crafty game master, um, and there's like a case in point. In one of my adventures I wrote years ago, the Caverns of the Dead God, there's a cult, and there's politics. And so you have to be careful because like the critical thinking is, and if those of you who haven't played it, maybe would one day, I hope I don't ruin this for you, but there's one individual you'll find that you'll go, oh, they're like a, they're two-faced, they're playing, you know, the, the party. And you might want to kill them, but then they are the son, the offspring of someone who's got a lot of political clout. And so there's this critical thinking like, do we kill this guy? Or do we take him captive? If we do, to return to town, is he going to see justice? Are we going to get, I mean, so there's those times I could point to an example of like, the party has to think, what do we do with this guy? And what are the repercussions? You know, I mean, so would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Excellent. That's a wonderful example. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, this one's up there should be escapism, blowing off steam, just plain fun, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and I'll give an example. There's some people that we've talked about this, I think, that if you're having a bad day, maybe you shouldn't come to the game that night. But I'm someone that there's been days where I've had a terrible day at work. I work 12 hours. I'm tired. I'm mentally and physically exhausted. And I've started to like beg off, you know, eh, I'm not going to come tonight. And the gang's like, oh, come on, guy. And I get there at the table and then I'm buoyed by, you know, the friendship, the camaraderie, the table talk, the snacks or whatever. Next thing you know, I'm out of my funk. I'm in a good mood. And I'm going, man, I'm glad I came, you know. So definitely the, you know. I can remember one time in all these years, though. That you were running and we could tell you'd had a bad day. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I'm only human, but it's nice to know one time in all yeah, these years. One time in all these years. Yeah. That was the one where it was like, oh, these monsters are feisty tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he stands over you and he stabs you in the eyeball repeatedly. He spits in your face. And anyway, no. Um, but anyway. So you there's, all die tonight. Yeah. And so, I mean, the escape isn't blowing off steam fun. I mean, because I want to think. What was the story when well, you well you've told it before I think but when you first reached out to try to get back into RPG gaming, I thought there'd been some sort of a nudge from the misses or, or is that just somebody else or craziness like get out of the house interact with people meet new people no that's that's your fantasies entirely I know so it's all good my um, wife likes having me around the house oh well that's hard to believe but okay I um, like some people <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um. Anyway, so here's some ones that, that that's a lot of those were probably ones most people would think of, but I really tried to, you know, go deeper. So vocabulary. Go deeper. Vocabulary. As a kid in the country, you know, a little bumpkin, but I started playing D&D &D when Gary H. introduced me to it like in the third grade or something. So anyway, if you read those books, and also reading comics as well, because Excelsior, you know, thanks, Stan Lee, you know, using big words. Phantasmagoria. But, yeah, but between reading and running D&D &D in those books and comic books, the Marvel Comics, I remember they tested me in like the seventh or eighth grade, maybe even sixth grade, and I can remember the principal called me, and I thought, oh, God, what am I in trouble for now? Because I stayed in trouble, hard to believe. And he's like, uh, Matt, uh, well, they tested you in your vocabulary is college level. And I'm like, huh? You know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so, yeah, one of those little things you don't think about that boosts your vocabulary. Um, and then also the role-playing games, we've talked about, we both are definitely, Eddie, more so a video gamer. And he's like Cody and his PC, love of PC gaming. The great thing about the role-playing games is sometimes it's that break you might need from screen time. That's some, I'm going to some ones you wouldn't think of. I thought of, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's over here nodding. So not me, but I think I I don't ever need a break. 
But yeah. I think Cody had talked about that, and especially coming from MMOs, mm-hmm. that could be something where you need a break from that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, another interesting new in entrepreneurship, game cafes, pro game masters. So there's another interesting bit uh, positive. Yeah, a financial aspect to gaming. There's a kid, you know, I remember my mom go, well, you know, could you make a dollar with this? And I remember thinking, well, probably not. But now there are people that have... You know, uh, up start game companies. Um, we're talking about bits and bytes. There's a guy who's literally making, I assume, a living selling uh, snacks and food and drink. And there's board gaming going on. I'm sure he'd allow some role playing at a table or something. So it's interesting the the entrepreneurship, you know. And there's pro game masters. There's mm-hmm. guys that are making something crazy per hour. Like I read a guy to like New York or something. I mean, he's like this. He's doing it for a living, and he's got all the props and does the voices and everything. Well, you think know. about this podcast and the con. Oh yeah, we're yeah. making a crazy amount of money off that. That crazy amount being zero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, love of the game, but but it's interesting the things that, that come out of it. And then there's stuff like the, it's therapeutic. Uh, I keep uh, reading more and more really cool articles about um, actual. Uh, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, people in that realm that use role playing games as a tool as part of their therapy. And I read a really neat story about uh, a girl. There's like a whole table of girls, you know, and, and, and so they've got, you know, girl power. And this one girl had, like, in her life had so much trouble saying no, but through, uh, the game or whatever, and well, you're role playing. It's not you, so she could step out of her comfort zone, and you know, at the table, her character is like, no, you know, whatever, and there disagrees. But there's one interesting. There was a, a young lady, I think, or it was a guy, anyway, that was playing a game with these therapists in this group, and uh, they're kind of quiet, and everyone's kind of like not really interacting with this individual because they're very shy and withdrawn or whatever. Well, at one point, they meet a lich. And the lich is kind of reclusive and all this kind of stuff. And then it's funny, the girl often comes, to, who's hadn't really said anything after numerous sessions, she starts taking up for the lich because she sees that common bond that they're both quiet recluses. And all of a sudden, through the story of the lich, the people suddenly had more empathy for her. And anyway, it was, so it's a really interesting how uh, these games are being used for, for therapy. I think that's really neat. Anything? Yeah, I was just thinking about how it was used for reverse therapy with you. With your little, uh, what was it, the death arena? We should all get along. <laughs> <laughs> Reinforcing bad habits. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. And so, and another interesting thing, and it kind of segues into maybe like we talked about Ron's gotten role playing and likes that, and now he's collects and paints miniatures. There's collecting, it's another layer of the hobby. Is that a good thing, though? Yes and no. But I will say that, like, the old joke about you can never have too many dice. And so there's people that have oodles of dice, you know, or they, all the books and the paraphernalia and the miniatures, and you don't have to have that stuff, but there's people that do. And then there's ones that go like me for a while. I was trying to get all this older product. Like I bought chain mail and the old box sets I'd had as a kid and had the nostalgia for them, you know, and they were lost to the ages. And so, yeah, I mean, and then now I'm offloading a lot of that stuff on um, eBay right now. Uh, but yeah, there's the collecting aspect, and collecting's fun. I mean, you're a big collecting guy, gay. Okay? Yeah, that's why I ask. Is it a good thing? Yeah, because you would know better than anybody. There's a lot of investing involved in collecting. Sure, but if you can do it and you have fun with it, again, I mean, you know. So yeah, as long as you're enjoying it. Yeah, and so what would be uh, any other positive aspects that I didn't touch on? Uh, you talked about vocabulary, but you didn't talk about math skills. Oh, yeah. Now, that's see, but that's because I don't, not a big fan of math as a general rule. But it probably helped you as a kid. Yes, indeed. With having to add up all those D6s and doing Thacko back in the day where you had to use subtraction. Oh, yeah. But now I will say it's wild that you could throw out a handful of dice and your typical gamer can add it up faster than Joe Blow from Kokomo or whatever, yeah. I like my uh, one friend, Michael, when he would roll out like the damage dice and he'd be like, oh, crap, public math. Because <laughs> I'm always like, I know it, like if Gary's at the table with you, mm-hmm. he's got it calculated by the time you have moved your hand away. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, four plus three and then two yeah. more. And I just, I know he's got that, that already. If you and if I misspoke, 
Yeah, you know, sometimes I just look at Gary, like, how much is it? Before I'm even going to do, I'm not even going to go to the mental trouble because Gary, he's a guy who loves math and numbers and has a really sharp mind for that Gary H. And, yeah, no, he's he's like rain man he's already figured it out the the dice has barely struck the table and he's like and we're talking about back in the 3.5 days where it was like well it's tuesday oh, man, yeah. you're wearing a green shirt you're standing on one foot uh so that's plus six but then wait a minute you know the, the other guy's got a red shirt that's minus two and it's you know and the equinox was minus two. i mean there was so much r ridiculous math in uh, uh, 3.5. But if you want to keep, teach your kids some math and vocabulary, here's one way to do it. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. And that's kind of like... Not by uh, watching Deadwood. Yeah, I played Monopoly with my youngest to help him understand, because my children are autistic. Yeah, we did that too. We played Monopoly to try and understand money. A little. Mm-hmm. So, but without being out in the real world with real money. So, yeah. And there was the numbers and the math and all, which was good, too. And learning to read, like, now, what card do you have in front of you and all that stuff. So, no, I mean, games, again, are a great teaching tool, you know. So, boom, we just came up with another, so to speak. So, it's a lot of positive aspects to gaming. But what are some we forgot? Let us know. Send us some of that good feedback. Exactly. Well, we beat this horse for an hour and ten. I think that's pretty long in the tooth there. All right. Well, you get a little extra because we've been gone away. Yeah. Hopefully we won't be gone away. I don't know if we even bothered to cover this again, but it looks like Matt's not going anywhere now for a yeah, while. I thought I was going to go traveling, but it, that does not appear to be the case. I'm working some long hours, but I don't think I'm going anywhere to work. So, yeah. So as long as these rock band microphones keep working... And that actually, we tried to get some new microphones and upgrade this a little yeah, bit. And that yeah. was the problem. So we will see. We will see. Yeah, it's hilarious. Two guys in a dining room with a laptop and two rock star microphones. And, I mean, overall, it's pretty good quality. Yeah. <laughs> Humble setup. All right. Well, I can see by the clock on the wall that we're all out of hit points. Ah. Bye.